Hey, what's up? I'm Justin. Welcome to 65 Drums, the place to keep on top of all things electronic drum related. Now, I've been thinking about a question recently. How many sounds and kits should be inside of a drum module? It seems like a really simple question because it is, but that decision on how many sounds and kits you're gonna include in one of these guys, it affects everything going forward and it's a make or break decision on how good this thing is gonna turn out to be. So before we go any further, let me just go over how many sounds different flagship modules have had in the past versus what they have now. So going back to the late 90s when the TD-10 was announced, you can see that it had 600 sounds inside of the module. Moving forward to the TD-20X, it had 920. The TD-30 had 1,100 sounds. What a lot of people don't realize about the TD-30 is that if you go deep in the settings, you can actually switch between Roland TD-20X mode and TD-30 mode. It's actually two modules in one, and I did a tutorial on this if you wanna go check it out. Anyway, the TD-30 had 1,100 sounds inside of it, and the TD-50, you know, the next generation, has over 400 sounds. They don't even give us a you know a complete count. They just say over 400 sounds. That is a really, really big shift. And why did Roland do this? They cut the numbers more than half. Did they just rush the module? Or was this a very specific decision in order to cut down on the number of fluff sounds and just put in better, you know, higher quality samples and more layers to those samples? We don't really know for sure, but let's take a look at Yamaha and what they've done over the years. The DTX Extreme 2 had 2,171 sounds. The DTX Extreme 3 had 1,115 sounds, and same thing for the DTX 900M, which is the current version, because that's pretty much the exact same thing with some minor tweaks to the drum module. Now let's take a look at Alesis. The DM10 had 1,047 sounds. The DM10 MK2 Pro, which I don't really think is the true successor to the DM10, but I felt like I'd mention it. It has 700 sounds inside of it. And the Elisa Strike, which I do think is the successor to the DM10, that has 1,600 sounds inside of it. Unfortunately, not every single company will give us specs like that. For example, the ATV85 drum module, that thing only has five kits inside of it, and it didn't exactly give us a count for how many sounds are inside of there. But you can guess just from the fact that there's five kits, it's not many, a lot less than even the TD-50. Now you can download more sounds from the website that they have, but still five kits, that's not that many kits. If we take a look at like the Pearl Mimic Pro, again, we don't have a specific sound count, but we do know that it has about 60 kits. Meanwhile, the average Roland and Yamaha kits, they'll usually have somewhere around 80 to 100 kits. What's really interesting to me is the fact that as hardware gets more and more powerful, we're putting in less and less sounds. And again, this goes back to the heart of the question I asked in the beginning. Exactly how many kits and how many sounds should you try to cram in one of these guys? A lot of these electronic drum companies, they don't have a huge budget to make these drum sets. They gotta keep their profit margin high. So they're working with pretty old components. Take a look at this. Does this look like it should have been manufactured in 2018? A lot of electronic drum components, they're not working off of the same kind of technology that's inside your phone. They're working off of tech that's like five or 10 years old. It's actually pretty terrible. So a lot of times what these engineers have to decide between is putting in a ton of sounds, like I can put in 2000 really crappy sounds or really mediocre sounds. We can just compress the files. We can put in less sample layers. And then of course you can take the opposite approach where you just have a handful of really amazing sounding kits with tons of velocity layers, really nice high quality sampling. The problem is with today's hardware, you can't really do both. Phone hardware, laptop hardware, that stuff's amazing. But unfortunately they're not using those kinds of components inside of drum modules. So you kind of have to choose between a couple of really good kits or a ton of mediocre kits. Now this seems like a really easy decision to make. Obviously you wanna just go for quality versus quantity. But let me tell you, that's not really the perfect way to go either because I've experienced drum modules like that. Let me uh, bring up the DM10 as an example. You can actually download one amazing kit. That one kit took up all the processing power and all the storage space of the entire DM10 drum module. Now take a look at the ATV85. They mailed me a review unit that I got to try out for a little bit. You can go check out my review. And that thing only has five kits inside of the drum module. I mean, they sound great. They do sound amazing. The problem is you only have five kits to choose between and you get bored really quickly. Just because you have five amazing sounding kits doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna want to use every single one of them. That's the argument a lot of these drum companies such as ATV uses. We could have put 100 kits in, but we cut out the 95 crappy ones we would have put in, and we just gave you the five gold ones. The problem is, I don't necessarily wanna use all those five kits you chose for me. We live in a world where people trash on Sabian or Zildjian. They don't like that brand. Well, it's not necessarily that those symbols are bad, it's just that you don't really prefer the sound that they produce. 
And that's the same thing with drum modules. If you just give us five kits, no one's gonna possibly be able to agree that those five kits are the ones you should have chosen to put inside that drum module. I've gotta believe there's some sort of middle ground between these two camps. Five really good kits is not enough. It's not gonna satisfy you. You're not gonna like all those five kits anyway. And then having 100 mediocre kits isn't the way to go either because okay, you got choices, but all your choices kind of suck. So maybe the middle ground is that drum companies start putting in 20 kits. You don't have five incredible high quality kits, but you don't have 100 mediocre kits. There's some sort of balance in between, maybe 25, maybe 30 kits. That way we still have choices, but they also sound good at the same time. Now, of course, the real answer is that drum companies need to step up their hardware game. They need to start using higher quality stuff. I think Roland, Alesis, and Yamaha should all take a look at what Pearl's doing with their newest module and mimic that. They should be using modern technology in their drum modules, not stuff that looks like it was made back in the 90s. You could build a drum module that could house Superior Drummer 3. Companies are just choosing to put in low cost components in there. Now, another interesting thing is to see how companies are handling their sounds. On the one hand, you got companies like Roland where they'll always sacrifice the sound quality to have fast load times. That's very, very important to them. And that's one of the reasons why I like Roland drum modules because they have instant load times. If you take a look at the Elisa Strike, they'll sacrifice load times so they can have higher quality sounds. Some of their load times are up to like 20 seconds long. It was absolutely nuts. And then you have Yamaha and no one knows what the heck they're doing because they haven't been doing anything new in the last who knows how long. Now, of course, I realize this quality versus quantity debate will never go away. And we're always gonna see people that wanna have really high quality sounds and then people that wanna just have a lot of options. So you can either go to a fancy restaurant or you can go to a buffet. There's two different approaches here and I totally understand that. The one thing that really fascinates me about this entire discussion is the fact that electronic drummers are becoming more and more impatient. We want the e-drum companies to actually catch up with our expectations of where e-drums are going. We want larger electronic drum sets, there was a time when everyone would buy a six inch pad electronic drum set and we'd be happy. There was a time when we'd settle for really crappy sounds. But now we know it's possible, like any laptop can run Easy Drummer. How hard could that actually be to take that and put it inside one of these dedicated little boxes? We've already seen it with the Pearl Mimic Pro. We know we can load it into the two box drum at five. Basically what we're seeing is drummers not really standing for the crappy products that drum companies have been putting out over the last couple of years. And of course we see this time and time again when a big company doesn't keep innovating, when it doesn't keep pace with customer expectations, that's when we see little companies pop up to start taking away market share. The state of electronic drum modules right now is unacceptable. All these people that email me and send me messages asking for a really nice sounding electronic drum set for a thousand bucks and I can't give them a really good option because there are no amazing sounding drum sets for a thousand bucks, but there really should be. And it goes back to the same question. How many sounds should you put in one of these? The real answer is you should put as many as humanly possible, but you can't because the hardware isn't good enough yet. If I had to choose with today's hardware, I'd rather go for quality versus quantity but we should be able to have quality and quantity at the same time. Just my two cents. What do you guys think of this whole thing? Let me know down in the comments below. See you in a few.